Hello and welcome to this presentation where you will learn more about our antibodies that we offer for your stem cell research. I will talk about some of our primary antibodies for the characterization of stem cells and the differentiated cells. I will then introduce briefly our new superclonal secondary antibodies. And if you stay to the end of the talk, you will learn more about how to get rewarded for submitting data using our antibodies. Yes, we have antibodies. Combining legacy life technologies and thermoscientific, we now offer over 40,000 primary and secondary antibodies. Our antibody portfolio consists of high-quality primary antibodies and large selection of secondary antibodies, a variety of uh, fluorescent dyes, and a wide range of ELISA and related immunoassays that use antibody pairs. And our primary antibody really covers a broad tar target areas um, from stem cells, cancer, immunology, epigenetics, and neurobiology. In terms of secondary antibodies, we recently developed a new generation of secondaries called superclonal that are more specific, less cross-reactivity, and are compatible with broad applications. Um, today's talk will be focusing on mostly primary antibodies for stem cell research and a brief introduction on superclonal secondary antibodies. Here I just want to emphasize that during our antibody development, each antibody has gone through a stringent validation process, being tested in multiple applications as listed here in relevant cell systems. Um, for instance, Western blood immunofluorescence flow cytometry, uh, immunohistochemistry, and IP. And some of the uh, validation methods involve using RNAi knockdown the relevant targets and to see the decrease um, in the, at the protein level as well. The rest of the talk, I'm going to focus on our primary antibodies for stem cell research. With the recent technological advances, uh, diverse stem cell lines were derived and cultured under different conditions. In addition, various uh, differentiation protocols have been developed and optimized to generate mature or close to mature functional differentiated cells from these stem cells whether through um, EB formation or uh, direct differentiation from PSCs. There is a huge need for a reliable characterization methods to confirm the quality of the PSCs and adults themselves, as well as their differentiated uh, derivatives. And antibody-based detection methods, as you all know, such as immunocytochemistry and flow cytometry, are uh, very commonly used. The high quality of the antibodies is one of the key factors contributing to the success and rapid progress of stem cell research. We in Thermo, at Thermo Fisher offer a com comprehensive library of primary antibodies for stem cell research. Uh, in this presentation, I will highlight those for the characterization of PSCs, um, EB3 germ layers, and uh, multipotent adult stem cells and some progenitor cells. Here's a list of selected antibodies for characterization of pluripotent stem cells. As you can see, we have a broad coverage of pluripotency markers, uh, including those commonly used ones such as ARC4, SSEA4, TRI160, TRI181, nanog, and SOXO, etc. And we also have directly, uh, dye directly conjugated antibodies and isotype controls. Um, that could help you reduce the workflow, the time and effort that you put in your workflow. Here I'm showing you an example of iPSC surface staining uh, with a dye directly conjugated TRI160 and TRI 181 antibodies. Uh, so here cells were fixed um, but not permeabilized. Uh, so cells were directly stained with uh, dilife 488 conjugated anti 1281 it's green here, and then dilife 650 conjugated tra 160 antibodies uh, in, shown in red here. Um, and we also have the, their IgM isotype control with the same uh, dye conjugated um, as control shown here in the bottom. 
Here I'm showing examples of intracellular staining of iPSCs using dye-directly conjugated antibodies. Uh, so here, the uh, GIPCO IPSC lines were fixed and permeabilized and stained with either their dye-conjugated isotype controls or uh, like dye-like D488 uh, conjugated anti-LIN28, which is green here, and then uh, or um, dye-like conjugated uh, SOX2 antibody, uh, shown in the bottom. So the last two example was using cells that are fixed and or permeabilized uh, for staining, and but sur cell surface proteins can also be stained quickly with dye-conjugated antibodies while cells are kept in culture. This slide shows an example of live cell immunostaining of our PSC surface marker, uh, TRA160, on an iPSC colony growing on a feeder layer of uh, irradiated mouse embryonic fibroblast mass. And here CD44 is used as a marker surface protein expression. Many differentiated cells, including mass, um, as a negative control, so it's absent uh, in the PSCs. Um, the positive control uh, staining of TRA160 and the negative uh, staining of CD44 uh, is used to confirm the newly derived IPSC colony is fully reprogrammed, and they're good to go. So this slide shows you an example of using unconjugated antibodies, um, primary antibodies, and then secondary conjugate secondary antibodies for imaging and flow analysis. So here is uh, IPSC HEL 11.4 line or stains with nanoc antibodies or SSA4 antibodies. Uh, to show some nice uh, nucleus or um, surface uh, staining. And these antibodies also um, shown work for flow cytometry analysis as shown in the bottom. Analyzing PSCs and confirming the presence of self-renewal -re gene products uh, is important, but not sufficient for verifying uh, functional pluripotency of our PSC line. Uh, the other critical test is to confirm the ability of the PSCs to differentiate into cells of the three embryonic germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. And we offer a variety of antibodies for each characterization of the each layer, as shown. Some of them are shown here. Common markers for analyzing differentiation in uh, EBs uh, include smooth muscle actin, SMA, for mesoderm, the primitive hepatocyte marker alpha fetoprotein, AFP, for endoderm, and the neuronal marker beta-3 tubulin for ectoderm. So here I'm showing on the top panel example of using each of these individual antibodies to characterize the different, uh, these three germ layers. In the bottom, we offer shows that this uh, we offer the three germ layer immunocytal uh, chemistry kit that that has everything in there to allow you to analyze uh, multi multi layers in the same sample. Moving on to neural lineage, um, here I'm showing you some selective antibodies for the characterization of neural stem cells. Uh, as you can see on the left, um, we have uh, antibodies for commonly used uh, key markers for neural stem cells, such as PAC6, SOX2, SOX1, and Nestin. On the right, I'm showing you a staining of neural stem cells derived from the iPSC line and using the GIPCO PSC neural induction media. Uh, these cells are staying positive for Nessin and SOX2, both in immunocytochemistry and by flow cytometry analysis. And these cells also express um, some levels of PAC6, um, as shown in the bottom right. And um, this was done by analysis with both in immunocytochemistry and again flow. During neural differentiation, neural stem cells undergo progressive lineage restrictions leading to the generation of glial and neuronal progenitors. The neuronal path will lead to, to the generation of t different types of neurons, such as dopaminergic, uh, garbanergic, uh, and motor neurons. Um, here I listed uh, selective antibodies uh, for the characterization of different types of neurons. We have antibodies for um, markers for general neurons, such as beta-3 tubulin, MAP2, 
uh, neural filaments. We also have end studies for characterization of dopamine uh, nurturing neurons, such as TH um, OTX2. <coughs> also, for uh, markers for GABA neurons, like GABA, um, GAT65, and also motor neurons. Here I'm showing you representative uh, immunofluorescence analysis of GABA neurons on the top and the T, uh, TH positive DA neurons in the bottom. Um, using these cells were derived from H9 embryonic stem cells uh, using their respective differentiation media. Um, as you can tell, the uh, majority of the cell population of uh, GABA positive and uh, uh, TH positive on the bottom. We also have a wide collection of uh, unconjugated or dye directly conjugated antibodies for the analysis of mesenchymal or hematopoietic stem cells and other adult stem cells. In the interest of time, I'm not going into details about the da representative data, uh, but encourage you to find out more later on our website. Uh, we have collections of antibodies for positive markers and negative uh, selection, uh, negative markers for these cell types. Again, I encourage you to check out our website, antibody website, to find out more about our antibodies and, and stem cell related antibodies. Um, and the bottom uh, two web links uh, allow you to get access to our recently launched generated uh, handbooks um, about antibodies for stem cell research. And at the bottom is the one for uh, neurodegenerative uh, disease research. Now I'm going to switch gears a little bit to talk about our uh, superclonal secondary antibodies. I know most of you use uh, secondary antibodies almost daily. Have you ever considered cross-reactivity of your secondary antibody as the source for results that don't match what you expected? Have you ever wondered how you could get rid of background in your fluorescent imaging experiments? Superclonal secondary antibodies uh, represent a breakthrough technology in recombinant antibodies. They're designed to uh, provide precise and accurate detection of mouse, rabbit, and goat primary antibodies in a variety of ap applications. Um, we say they are the best of both monoclonal and polyclonal worlds. And the reason for that, they are being gone through um, preparatory screening and production process that yields uh, specific mixtures of recombinant goat or rabbit secondary antibodies that bind with the epitope precision of a monoclonal antibody, uh, as well as um, the achieving uh, the multi-epitope coverage and sensitivity of a polyclonal antibodies. They were validated for performance in common immunoassays applications, such as uh, Western blotting, ELISA, and cell imaging. And they are validated for lot-to-lot -lot consistency and available as a wide range of conjugates, such as Alexafluor, HRP, biotin, and uh, alkaline phosphatase. Again, using them, you can eliminate your uh, cross-reactivity backgrounds without compromise of the sensitivity. Here's a representative comparison of superclonal secondary antibody uh, to the regular polyclonal secondary antibody. Here you're looking at the staining of uh, nuclei of HeLa cells. Uh, they're labeled with anti-nucleostaminin primary antibodies, uh, which was then detected with the respective types of Alexa 4-4-ADA conjugated secondary antibodies, shown in green. Um, the left side is using the regular polyclonal uh, secondary antibodies. On the right is the one using superclonal secondary antibodies. As you can see, uh, the detection with a superclonal secondary antibody uh, showed significantly uh, less cytoplasmic staining, indicating um, enhanced specificity. Here's the website you can find more information on the superclonal secondary antibodies. Last but not least, do you know 
that you can get rewarded for submitting your data using our antibodies as part of our ongoing effort to collect performance data and researchers' feedback on qualified antibodies we have a program that rewards you for sharing your data with us. Simply submit your data for qualified antibodies to the Innovators Program, as shown here, and receive additional antibodies of equal or lesser value absolutely free. As always, you can rely on our 100% performance guarantee that ensures all antibodies work robustly in the applications listed on the data sheet. That's it for now. Thank you for your attention, and again, please visit our website for more information on our antibodies. Thank you.